السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and may every single one of us be blessed. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, it is indeed an honor to be here in front of you and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens our hearts in a way that the message comes from the heart to the heart and that it is relevant inshallah, something we can take home and ponder over. We all know that as Muslims, we have duties unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the term Muslim actually means a person who has submitted to the law of Allah or whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated and decreed. That is a Muslim. So sometimes we call ourselves Muslimin. We say, I'm a Muslim. But in actual fact, we have not yet submitted to the laws of Allah. Perhaps we are paying lip service to it and we would need much improvement. And I'd like to think that myself included and perhaps most of us, if not every single one of us, there is always room for improvement in the way we have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way we have surrendered to Allah's instruction and command. And this always shows within a person's character and conduct and the way we treat others especially. Today across the globe, we find people who sometimes, and I spoke about this last night for some of you who might have been with us. Sometimes what we find is people claim to be Muslimin and they claim to be followers of the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the way they treat others is actually so bad that it leaves a bad taste in the mouths of those who interact with them. I don't know why I'm saying mouths, but perhaps it's because we speak foul language. We choose words that are hurtful. How then do we expect people to turn to the deen? And how do we expect to benefit ourselves? And this is why one of the most important aspects that I need to worry about in yourselves is the way we use our tongues. If you take a look at the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find it quite clear. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is Surah Al-Ahzab, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. O you who believe, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utter that which is upright. Sadeed means that which is upright, straight. We could also say only utter that which is upright, which means stay away from language that is foul, from falsehood, stay away from anything that is vulgar, that which is intentionally hurtful to others. Remember to, other, to utter words of goodness. Remember to apologize to people. Remember to say that which is straightforward and so on. All this is included in that term, sadidan, that which is straight. We stay away from so many or from all the different types of words that are bad, unacceptable, and we utter words that are good, so much so that even if you were to utter words of kindness and love to your own spouse and children and parents and family members, you would find that that would be considered a straight, upright speech. May Allah protect us. And you look at the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. he clearly says, a true believer is he who is not vulgar. He is not bad mouthed he does not utter swear words he does not lie these are the narrations of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so to develop character it's not going to just come without an effort i call on you to make a major massive effort to work on your character and conduct so that you can improve yourself as a muslim because many of us sadly think islam is one thing and character and conduct is another yet your character is a reflection of your Islam and your Iman. And this is why when Rasulullah sallallahu was asked by his companions regarding something that I desperately want and you too would probably definitely want. What is that? Jannah. Jannah. May Allah grant us Jannah. I want Jannah and so do you. Don't you want Jannah? Yes, you do. Subhanallah. Don't you want Jannah? You do. So 
the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what are the characteristics of those who will be entering Jannah? You know, there are so many people who will be entering Jannah. What are their characteristics? And he made it clear. He mentioned two main qualities. What are they? Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluqi. The consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you are worried about your link with Allah and your relation with Allah. I need to ask myself, am I really questioning myself? What is my link with Allah? How close am I to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we questioning ourselves? Am I better in my link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today than I was yesterday or than I was earlier on this morning perhaps? If that is my concern and that is my worry and that is what I am always asking myself, that means by the will of Allah, I'm heading in the right direction. But if I'm a person who never ever thinks, what's my link with Allah? How can we then ever have that beautiful link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because in order to develop that link, we will need to be disciplined. We will need to improve ourselves. We will need to get up for salah, not solely because we have to, like I say, because we want to. Difference between the two. We get up for salah at some stage because we have to. It's our duty. But there's a stage higher than that. And that is when you develop your link with Allah, you fulfill your salah because you want to over and above that obligation. I want to do it. So this is why you find yourself dressing appropriately because I want to dress appropriately. There is, there is obviously the ruling. A person would not be sinful if they did it because they have to do it. But we would achieve a greater reward if we did it because we want to do it over and above the obligation that Allah has placed on our shoulders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So this is why the same narration says you need taqwa Allah. That is one of the characteristics that will earn you the paradise that we all want. And for your information, the difference between a believer and a non-believer, one looks forward to the meeting with his maker whilst the other does not. Remember this. You have people sometimes walking all over the world. If they are not believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they don't have belief, they would not be looking forward to the day they meet with Allah. If you are a true believer, you look forward to the day you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You look forward to the last day. You know that there is a life after death, which is far more valuable and far more important. And in fact, that is the most important thing for us. It is more important than whatever's happening around me today. Whatever I'm being affected by or the profit and loss that I may be experiencing in my own business life or family life or anything else. Today in this world is not as important as my akhirah. This is why we are taught as Muslimin, do not compromise your hereafter. Do not compromise your paradise by falling into the traps of the world. Sometimes people want to do something. They want to achieve something that is unacceptable in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But because it is being marketed so strongly, they tend to fall into it, not realizing that, you know what I'm just doing? I have just sold a huge mansion in Jannah and I have re received in return for it a payment and that is something minor that is even the displeasure of Allah that cannot bring about any goodness. So getting back to what we were saying about taqwa, to develop that characteristic requires a great effort. It requires the constant question, what is my link with Allah? How can I improve myself? My brothers and sisters, I can do better. Every day I must look at myself and say, how have I improved my link with Allah? Whether it's my dress code, whether it is the quality of salah. Because some of us, mashallah, if I were to ask you how many of you read five salah a day, a lot of us would put up our hands. I hope all of us would. But the quality of that salah is of value. It is of essence. If we are not going to be from amongst those who are bothered about the quality of that salah, then how are we going to improve? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more conscious of it. So remember this regarding the link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when it comes to the issue of character, good character and conduct, that is your link with fellow human beings. How do you treat others? How do you talk to them? How do you deal with them? This is something that will make you a person who will earn paradise because it's not easy to deal with people of different temperaments, perhaps sometimes different likes and dislikes, perhaps sometimes people who are loud mouths or sometimes people who talk in a way that you cannot hear them, sometimes people who are difficult because maybe they might have had issues in their early age and early life and it might be reflecting later on and this is why they might be 
behaving in a specific way and here you come as a mu'min and a believer and you don't even have the time to think that this person I need to acknowledge Allah's made us all different and this is why I will address them with a little bit more patience than I do others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have patience with one another. Not everybody will develop. Not everybody will develop spiritually or religiously at your pace and at your speed. This is why I always say part of good character is to acknowledge that it took you so many years to come into the fold of goodness and to realize your link with your maker. Why is it that we become so blunt with people and so harsh with others that we want them to turn in five minutes, two minutes, yet it took us 50 years to turn. Allahu Akbar. And this is a characteristic of a Muslim to consider the fact that I might have, like we say, found Islam years after I was born, which means maybe at the age of 20, 30, 40, some of us maybe at the age of 45, 50, when we started getting, you know, pains in our legs. May Allah grant shifa to everyone who, who is suffering in any way, any form of illness. I mean, to be honest, it took me so many years. Just an example. If it took me so many years to find the path and to tread upon it, I cannot expect someone else to find that path according to my whims and fancies my desires we need to remember <laughs> you O muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the messenger is being told you do not guide whomsoever you wish but allah guides whomsoever he wishes so what's our duty our duty is to convey the message. And this is why regarding the messengers, the prophets of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تُبْدُونَ وَمَا تَكْتُمُونَ The duty of the messenger is not more than conveying the message. He doesn't have the capacity to actually instill the guidance in you, but he can guide you by showing you the path. Whether you tread upon it or not is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to be patient with one another. One of the sicknesses or ailments of the age is the issue of becoming judgmental very quickly with one another. We become impatient where we look at a brother subhanallah or we might come across a sister who may not be as practicing as we are perhaps outwardly and suddenly we find ourselves developing this hatred towards them as a person not realizing my brother two years ago you might have been in a worse off position than they ever were throughout their lives what happened you have no patience we are not at all saying we condone that which is wrong no don't get me wrong but we need to work patiently with people we need to realize and understand my duty and yours is to convey the message not only verbally but through my beautiful character that is enshrined by islam amazing we say i'm a muslim i'm a muslim but your character and conduct is nowhere near islam why is that the case so it is important for me to ensure that i am a living muslim where when people look at me they feel subhanallah this person is so calm so content let me find out what is the motivation behind this contentment and the calmness that this person has and the goodness they treat everyone with kindness when they meet a person perhaps who might look like you know sometimes we see people and you hear a comedy hey, this guy's a drug addict just because he looks a little bit like a heavy smoker allah protect us look i'm just finding an excuse for that may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness Either way, we should be leaving the bad habit. But there are two things. If you develop such a hatred for the individual, how are you going to work on the quality? This is why I call upon you. Let's work on our own qualities and let's help others work on their qualities. The way that will happen is go back to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at him, how he used to engage in salah at night. So much so that Aisha radiallahu anha used to ask him, you're praying. And you know your status. You know the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi. He is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that he is earning paradise by the will of Allah, by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was a status given to him, forgiven completely. We would say, Nabi min anbiya illa, the best of creation, or the highest of prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's standing in prayer. Until his feet are swollen, his legs are swelling. And when he's asked why, 
He says, should I not be a thankful servant? Can I not show thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, I want to pause here and ask a question to myself and yourselves. Look at what he says is thankfulness to Allah. It did not make him arrogant at all. Nor did he say, you know what? I pray to Hajjud, so I'm a big deal. A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. That is your secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what it did do, subhanallah, he was the most humble person. He spoke to everyone. He spoke to them calm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him as harisun alaykum. He was very concerned about the turning of the people towards the goodness. And he always seized every opportunity to express the goodness to the people that you know what? Here is the path. You will see it not only or you will hear about it. You, you won't only hear about it, but you will see it also enshrined in the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the same applies to us. If we work on our own qualities at night, we are praying, we develop our link with Allah. If that salah is done correctly, it will instill within us the care and the true concern for everyone else in humanity. I am concerned about the non-Muslims as well. I am concerned about their well-being in every single way. I need to be. Why? Because I'm a Muslim. And this would make me reach out to them in so many different ways. Subhanallah. So many different ways. And I always look at ourselves here. And I say to myself, Subhanallah, the bulk of us, maybe all of us. In fact, I could comfortably say all of us. At some stage, our forefathers, somewhere down the line, our forefathers were not Muslim. Do you know that? They accepted Islam. Even if someone has some of their forefathers out in the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, but the Sahaba radiallahu anhum also accepted Islam. They were not Muslimin before Islam came, obviously. They accepted the deen. Now, what I am saying is because if we were to treat every non-Muslim as a potential Muslim throughout our lives, whether they accepted it in our lives or not, and whether they accepted it before they died or not, if we treated them as potential Muslims, we would solve the problems of the globe by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to make sure we understand a person dislikes a bad habit. A person dislikes, for example, that which is wrong. But the individual, we always have hope, subhanAllah. There is a distinct difference in the Sharia, distinct difference in Islam between the individual and the act. We need to understand this. And we need to constantly have hope. If I were to make mention, for example, of a person, just for example, if I were to say a name of someone who's caused a lot of harm to you, part of your weakness would be to say, this man is evil, no hope. We're closing the chapter on him and he's going to hell. That's part of our weakness. But the character of a Muslim would always have hope. Look at Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you were to ask yourself who was or give me a name of a person who harmed him the most in the early stages, I'm sure you would agree with me. The name Abu Jahl. I'm sure you would agree. Abu Jahl. What was he? He was one of the most outspoken, most hardcore, hardline enemies of Islam who who actually went out of his way to cause bodily harm, physical harm to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After that, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-umarayn. Oh Allah, grant strength to Islam through the acceptance of Islam of one of these two. Who were those two? The two main enemies. Allahu Akbar. The reason why I make mention of this is, where is the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And where is our character and conduct? Yet we call ourselves good Muslims. I'm a good Muslim. Subhanallah. I'm really a good Muslim. And the way you look at others is actually the sign of a person who does not know the sunnah or the lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have a bad habit of picking that which suits us. We have a bad habit of taking that which suits us. And if everyone takes that which suits them, then we have a whole lot of people collectively we might come up with good character and conduct as a collective group, but individually, each one is lacking in something or another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to grasp what is being said. And may He help us to strengthen ourselves. And may He help us to help one another. My brothers and sisters, this is why if you want paradise, you need to develop your link with Allah 
and you need to be conscious of your link with your fellow human beings. If you take a look at these two terms that I made mention of in the hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being asked of how the qualities of those getting into paradise, he makes mention of huququllahi, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On one hand, that which you owe Allah, your link with Allah, and huququl ibad, the right of the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you. You need to be conscious of it. Make life easy for others. We have sometimes a stressful life solely because I'm a man who's not faithful. Solely because I'm a man not faithful to Allah, not faithful to those around me. Or a woman who perhaps has a tongue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. That is a sharp tongue. Sometimes it happens to the men. Sometimes women. It's, does not, it's not particular or peculiar to any gender in particular. But it happens to anyone and everyone. We need to become conscious. How do I talk to people? What is my treatment of my family members, my spouse? How much time do I spend with my spouse and family members? Remember, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always showed that he was the best to his wives and family members. And he actually says, Khayrukum, Khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you, those who are best to your family members, your spouses, your children, and so on. Your parents, have time for them. Make the time. Many of us think for a moment that we are brilliant Muslimin. When last did you speak to your mother? Oh, that hag. Astaghfirullah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa. Did you hear that? A'udhu Billah. May Allah never make us utter those dirty words, no matter what. Even if you have a difference of opinion with her, remember, be respectful, because that is the, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to those who are kind to their parents. So much so, even if they're not Muslim, the Quran invites you and instructs you to be kind to them. We may not want to obey an instruction that contradicts the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, we're not supposed to do that. But anything else, be kind. Remember, fulfill your parent non-Muslim. They ask you, please, can you help me? I've got a doctor's appointment. Can you take me to the hospital? You don't say that's a non-Muslim man. I, I'm not supposed to take them to the hospital. Why? Why should I do? No, it is your duty, your obligation. In fact, you are sinful if you don't reach out to them in that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So sometimes the warped understanding that we seem to be getting of the deen, that you know what, this deen teaches us to be very bad and very harsh and very arrogant when it comes to the treatment of those who don't follow the thin line that I may be upon. We should know we are not upon any line. We should know that. We are actually doing something that is far away from the teachings of the deen. Because my concern should be, how best can I reach out to the rest of my brothers and sisters in humanity? You know, one day, I was seated, and probably I may end with this story. I was seated not a long time ago with some people, and a waiter passed at a restaurant. And I said, brother, can you please get me some water? And the man went, and mashallah, he brought back water and whatever happened. And the, the brother sitting with me told me, how could you call him brother? How could you call him brother? You are a deviant. I said, look, to be honest with you, I don't want to get into big debates. It depends what you are referring to when you say a brother. What if he's your blood brother and he's not a Muslim? He's still your brother, but he's your blood brother. So it depends what you're meaning. There are people who are my brothers and sisters in faith. And there are people who are my brothers and sisters in humanity. We cannot deny that. The Quran acknowledges it. Listen to what Allah says regarding the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at one example. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ صَالِحٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ لُوطٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Allah speaks of the messengers when they told their people. Who are these people? They were people who rejected the message of these messengers. But Allah says, their brother Saleh told them. Why don't you fear Allah? Are you not going to be conscious of Allah? Their brother Lut told them, may peace be upon the messengers. And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon us all. Their brother told them, their brother in what? These people rejected the message. Brother in humanity. They were part of the same community. They may have even had links of blood. Subhanallah. So let's not have 
this notion that everyone else who perhaps doesn't tread on the hairline that I am treading upon is not even fit to be called my brother or my sister because it all depends what you mean by that. If they are not your brother in faith, they may be your brother in humanity or your sister. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reach out to others, reach out to yourselves. I don't have much time today, but by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I hope that the little bit that I have said would actually be of help to us, my brothers and sisters, to quickly recap. May we work, and I call on yourselves and myself, may we work as hard as we can on our tongues and on our behavior, our link with Allah, develop it for the sake of Allah. It's your link with your maker, develop it. You need to, it's about time you did. Improve yourself and develop your link with others, with human beings at large. I know of so many people that I've interacted with that have had nothing to do with Islam. Sometimes they've disliked Islam and yet after interacting with them, they've changed their attitude. I remember a call that we got from a certain woman, a lady, and I don't know exactly who she was, but she contacted us at the office and said, you know what? I always believed Islam was barbaric and it was preached hate and it did this and it did that. But after having seen what you do and after having seen the articles in the paper, you know, we have certain articles we put in the paper every week back at home. And after having seen this and that, I just want you to know that through the effort that you guys have made, I now acknowledge that this is a heavenly religion. That's all. So she did not accept the faith of Islam, but the minimum is the enmity she had was actually decreased through knowledge. And this is why I firmly believe that a lot of the times people have this notion through ignorance, which is wrong about others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cure it through ilm and through knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open every door of ours. My 25 minutes are up, Habibi. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.